going to be a perfect segue yeah, to it's anything. Yeah, perfect, actually. <laughs> Created the pig has to go. Uh, okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> Created a private Delaware company to pay a former adult film star. The Wall Street Journal reports that Michael Cohen used a company called Essential Consultants LLC on October 17, 2016, to pay Stephanie Clifford, whose stage name was Stormy Daniels, $130,000 for her silence about an alleged sexual encounter with Donald Trump in 2006. That is according to corporate records and people familiar with the matter. In documents reviewed by the journal, Cohen listed himself as an authorized person for the company. According to one person familiar with the arrangement, the parties used pseudonyms to mask the identities of those involved, with Clifford being identified as Peggy Peterson. In emails to the journal last week, Cohen did not address the payment, but said President Trump vehemently denies the alleged sexual encounter. He also discussed, uh, declined to discuss the private Delaware company and asked the journal to, quote, cease wasting my time. Ms. Clifford did not respond to the paper's request for comment. The White House has denied any sexual encounter took place. Michael Cohen has not responded to NBC News' requests for comments on the Wall Street Journal story. Am I, am I crazy? Or we know that. Yes. Yes. In any other moment in time, this would be a 24-7 news story. Think of what that story is, that weeks before the president got elected. And Monica Lewinsky was 24-7. A porn star who uh, allegedly had an affair with Donald Trump while Donald Trump either Melania was pregnant or, or, just, had or just had the baby. Yeah. Oh. And supposedly oh. there's a lot of proof involved with that. Yesterday the Post actually reported that that in, in her documents it said that he liked, I'm just, I'm not just reporting this, he liked to be spanked Ew. with a, with oh, a rolled up on. Fortune magazine Johnny. cover oh. with his picture on it. I believe it was Forbes. Just Forbes, I'm sorry. Like, I, I can't, by the way, this would, this would bring down any other presidents. It would be over. Can you imagine George W. Bush, Barack Obama? And because our president has set the bar so below mud that it almost becomes just another day at the office. We can't let that happen. Let's think about this again. Think, I think about this that is story. Why I don't understand just from a selling newspapers point of view, just from a pure capitalism point of view, why this is just not. And by the way, traction. this is not a salacious, uh, you know, National Enquirer story. The Wall Street Journal has hard reporting that shows where the money came from, who it went to. Michael Cohen, the attorney for President Trump, according to the Wall Street Journal, put his own name on this Delaware LLC that he set up a couple of weeks before Election Day. You're supposed to sort of put an agent or a phony name or somebody so they can't trace it. His name was on it, so the Wall Street Journal found the source of the money, right. found where the payment was directed. It's all right there in the reporting. I know the White House denies it, but the Wall Street Journal has been all over this and, story, and, and funny, it's a serious and real story. Then what were they paying her for? If it didn't happen, what and were they funny, the for? National Enquirer not covering it, probably. Right. Because right. Donald Trump is friends with, he sends the Enquirer after people. He's but it is I mean, but look at what happened to Al Franken oh. with a picture of with that one picture because that's what really where you can find a picture up. of exactly of, of that performer, you know, never mind. But the extent to which this has been never baked mind. in to Donnie's point is astounding to people who support him. Talk Joe's talked this week a lot about evangelicals sort of shifting what they'll they'll tolerate. A married man allegedly who's had an affair with a porn star and paying her off for her silence. It's a bad thing. How do you stand by that? How do you abide that unless you're completely willing to compromise everything you stand for and believe because you think Donald Trump represents something, that he's on your side, he's on your team. But then how do you get past the Access Hollywood tape? I mean, it was just yeah. equally as bad. It was his voice. It's him saying what he did. I mean, this <clears throat> man is a scoundrel. He, he is, his values are just twisted. Yep. Well, you know, Jonah Goldberg uh, in the National Review asked a question not looking straight at evangelicals, which you certainly could after uh, the judgmental nature that, uh, that, that certainly that segment of the Republican Party in going after Bill Clinton on, on very personal, uh, uh, very personal attacks, saying how could we have a man with morals like this in the White House now largely remaining silent, but evangelical leaders are yet another segment of American society that are corrupting themselves and corrupting their institutions by falling in line because politics is far more important 
uh, than what they what they cl have claimed their entire lives to be important. But Mika, there's there's I, I think even a bigger issue here, and it's look at putting context into Donald Trump's first year. Think about it. If you're Trumping, if you're Donald Trump, and you're sending out, uh, my gosh, tweets every day that attack. Australia early on, a country that stood with us and been in foxholes with us in every war over the past century, or you're attacking Great Britain, or you're attacking London's mayor after a terrorist attack, or you're attacking Angela Merkel, uh, one of our most steadfast allies in the world, or you're attacking allies all over the world, you're attacking the media, you're employing the same language that Stalin used, calling the media enemies of the people, you're making outrageous racist comments in Charlottesville, uh, you're making outrageous racist comments in the White House, you're denying those, and you just send out a flurry of outrageous tweets every day. Well. There is a method to that madness. Sensitive. It is what dictators use. I'm not calling Donald Trump a dictator, but it is what autocrats and di dictators have done a long time. It's what it's what Hitler and all of Hitler's people, and I'm not comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler, just like Flake wasn't comparing him to Stalin. But in 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 terms of communication tactics, numbing the masses, you can go back and read one history book after another history book, and you spread the lie. And you spread the lie every day, and you keep lying at the American people, and you, you flood them in so many lies. 2,000 lies by the latest count, the Washington Post fact checker, that's over five a day. And you keep this steady stream up so much that soon, populations, religious leaders, civic leaders, editorial writers, newspaper editors, he hopes TV hosts become numb to it. And so when something like this comes out, they just ignore it. But you see, that's the thing. This is a small compared to the biggest truth that Donald Trump doesn't want out. And it's the truth we've been asking about since January or, I'm sorry, make that December of 2015. And that is that Vladimir Putin has something on Donald Trump. Let yeah. me say it again, mm -hmm. because there's been a lot of noise from Donald Trump over the past year, as he, since he's been president. Vladimir Putin has something that he is holding over Donald Trump's head, and it is bad. We started asking that question in December of 2015, Two years ago, when Donald Trump was defending Vladimir Putin for assassinating journalists, Donald Trump was defending Vladimir Putin for assassinating political leaders in his own country. Donald Trump was defending Vladimir Putin for all the things he did. Mm -hmm. Jeff Sessions lied about meeting with the Russians, lied to the Senate. A Jared Kushner failed to disclose his meetings with Russians one after another. Um, I could, my God, I could go through the entire cabinet. Michael Flynn lied about context. Uh, Mike Pence got on TV and lied and said in, in January or February, we didn't talk to the Russians at all during the campaign. We talked to the American people. Well, no, they talked to Russians. And you go back and you look at Donald Trump's denial, I believe it was in February of 2017, two years in, that he was still claiming that they had not talked to the Russians then. So what is Donald Trump hoping? He's not hoping that he can just brush aside a story of a porn star. He's hoping when the truth comes out about what Vladimir Putin has and has had hanging over his head for decades, possibly, that we will all be too numbed to notice. Mm -hmm. 10 tweets a day, five lies a day, uh, it, it, it bread and circuses, all of these game show, reality show distractions. Mika, that's all he's hoping. He wants to numb the American people. He wants to numb the electorate. He wants to numb everybody, his supporters, which unfortunately it seems that he already is numbing a lot of the supporters to the dirty reality that is not only his presidency, but his past. And you've got to say, this story, which is a small story compared to what happened between Russia and Donald Trump, this story 
is case in point of how he has succeeded in the first year of numbing evangelical leaders' hearts, numbing a lot of evangelicals, numbing Republicans, numbing conservatives, corrupting everybody that has gotten in his way. Joe, I want to just add one thing to that, because I I think that was a brilliant assessment. I do think when it comes out, the treasonous things that will come out, I do think America will stand up and see the difference. I, I think his tactics are exactly as you said, but whether it happens a month from now, four months from now, seven months from now, I think it's going to be so prolific. And, and, and I think pe- pe- swerve people's heads in circles that I think it will rise above the, the kind of the Novocaine strategy that he's used. And a point of personal order, Mika, as they would say in Congress, I want to repeat again. I'm not comparing this man to Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler killed six million people and started a world war that was responsible for the deaths of tens of millions of people. He was one of the most evil people of the 20th century. Perhaps not as evil as Joseph Stalin, who killed 30 million of his own people. I'm talking, though, about the communication techniques that dictators like them use to numb the electorate and get people in their countries. You can say the same thing about Erdogan, you could say the same thing about uh, Duarte in the Philippines, you could say the same thing about, about dictators across the globe. They keep lying every day, so soon people in their country can't tell the difference between truth and lies. And he Let's said- hope that we don't become that numb as a country when we find out the truth about what really happened and what Vladimir Putin has on Donald Trump. I think he labeled the news fake news so he can press that button whenever he feels like it. And that's what he's doing on this. But the story is coming out. And as disgusting as it is, we will follow it. Uh, Just to put together what you just said about fake news and what Joe just said, remember, don't trust the intelligence agencies either. Mm -hmm. FBI is in tatters. Oh, my God. That's all part of this. So if they present information, you can plant that seed of doubt as well. Willie, that is, that is such a vital point. So who did Donald Trump go after before he was even president of the United States? And we warned him. We warned him on the air. And when we were talking to him in the transition, we warned him. He said, do not attack your intelligence yeah. committee. I mean, your intelligence communities, you need them. Do not attack the media. You're not going to win that war. But Donald Trump, you're exactly right. He knew he had to because he knew the FBI and the CIA and the uh, uh, the national security agencies, all of them had information on his past dealings and were going to have information on his dealings. So what does he do? He undercuts them. You're exactly right. It's unbelievable. The message to the people is don't trust the source of the information, whether it's the press, the FBI, the CIA. And thereby you hide your information. That is damning. Coming up, Jonathan Swan from Axios just obtained an internal memo from the White House, and it throws the immigration fight deeper in doubt, even deeper. Jonathan joins us with his new reporting next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.